Hi everyone, it's Deborah Walker on TNS Radio, giving you some food for thought as always. And I noticed that some of you are recognising the six million dollar man theme there. Yeah, I thought we'd put it on for all those six million dollar men out there. And uh, wow, well, hey, Bridgin is actually knows the uh, <laughs> the lyrics to it. She's breaking up. <laughs> you make me laugh, you do. Anyway, hello to everybody. Um, who's out there? Who's, out there? who's posting today? Where's Alan? Oh, yeah, there's Alan. I was going to say, don't tell me that Alan isn't here today and he's not posting. He must be posting. Anyway, say thank you to Alan because he's always posting masses of stuff for everybody to read. I'm not sure whether he'll get time to actually do that. Anyway, boy, do I have a food for the mind today. I'm, uh, I'm someone with a fairly open mind, which is permanently moving into areas I never thought 15 years ago I would actually believe in, never mind be interested in. But recently I had the opportunity to go to a channeling session. Mm -hmm. I was really sceptical to say the least, I have to say. But a person who took me was um, someone who's got really good intent, really good friend, and told me that I would really benefit from it. So I thought, you know what, I've got an open mind, why not? And um, and this is how I met my guest today. So I'm really pleased. And you know what I'm like, I do. I just kind of collect people on my route, don't I? And uh, I love to interview everybody. So I'm really pleased today to welcome Andy Finlayson, who um, has learned mediumship for about four years and learned to link with guides and the spirit world. And he now channels to give messages to people, healing and meditation. So hello, Andy. Hello there, Debs. It's, I, it's really great that you've agreed to come on, to be honest. And <sighs> Not only, not only to do this interview today, but also kind of to do a channeled session with us, which yeah. I am, re- yeah, I know, I'm really excited about it, in all honesty. <sighs> me too, I've never done one on radio before, so uh, <laughs> it'll be a first time for me, and uh, I'm sure it'll go just as well as any other channel session, and um, it's just lovely to be here and share it online with you all, it's, it's wonderful, thanks for having me. That's, that's brilliant, because I have to say that when I went to the session, my scepticism really did leave the leave the building, as, as we would say about Elvis, um, you know, after attending the session with you, because um, do you find that's actually the case? When people turn up, they can be quite sceptical, but actually they do change their mind after kind of... Being- yeah, I did wonder that night when I first met you. I thought, oh, I'm not sure whether you're, you know, whether you've done a lot of this or not before. But um, I could see that you relax into it, and what happens the the guides or the angels or the, the whoever's coming through generally bring in such a lovely energy of light and love that, that you notice it. You know that you're being held. And um, you suddenly think, yeah, then maybe there is something else here. It took me time to become confident with it myself. Mm. And uh, it, it just gets better and better. So, yeah, I, I can see why you'd be sceptical. And uh, I think it's really healthy to be sceptical. Brilliant. Yeah. So, so before we go any further, just give us some background about yourself because I'll be honest, and I say this to a lot of the practitioners who come on the show, you know, my careers teacher had never told me that I could become an energy healer or a channeler. So how did you get into doing what you're doing now? It's a good question. It's, it's, um, it's kind of a journey that snowballs, I think, for, for most people. For me, um, I was always quite sensitive as, as a child. I knew I had this kind of sensitive side to me. And as I grew up, I started asking lots of questions I was always very interested in, and in, in, in I would watch things happen in the world, and I'd be very curious. I go, "Why is that happening? Why do people have these gifts? We have this magical planet, and um, a lot of amazing things happen—miraculous things, or magical things, or or things out of the normal, paranormal, whatever the paranormal is in your life." I, I just look at it and think, "This planet is full of amazing, um, alternative or different." energy that we're not taught about as children we're not and it's not always taught of and so i i started um learning more and more about those things which fascinated me and i suppose what it's like this radio show you you start listening in and you start going down another route and you go wow there's there's something else here that i you know i haven't learned about but will change my reality so um as as life was was moving forward, I suppose after twenty one or so, I, I went to a, a normal church when I was a child, and then uh, I went back to it um, when I was about twenty one. My spirit started calling me, and I, I really enjoyed going to a, a, a normal church and getting a, a solid belief in Source in God. But then I was I was all, all of the sort of psychic phenomena was coming in, and I was learning about sort of meridians and chakras uh, outside in my reading and learning about you know your higher self and guides and angels and it I, I wasn't being fed enough of that you know in the in the church so I, I moved on and I, I started going to a spiritualist church 
And that's when I started getting messages. And I got so many good messages that came in. These mediums on the stage didn't know me from, for at all. And that they would just start telling me about my life and what spirit were telling me about me and about my journey ahead of me. And I was just so amazed. I thought, God, this is a whole new facet that I'm not aware of in life. And it just started, you know, opening up for me. And they said, come and join the circle if you want to. And, um, Joining a circle is an amazing thing. You ever get the chance to go to a circle, a spiritualist church, and and if you want to learn just how to link with your guides, it's just such an amazing experience. You you practice every week just to link with spirit, and um, I did that every week for about three or four years. And each time that you go there, you sense a little bit more. You sense either you say I'd like you sit in a circle and you say I'd like to um, make a link with spirit. Uh, like my guides to come in and you just say make me aware of your presence and the guides come in they either put some energy around you they will whisper you something they will make you feel something and suddenly you just get these uh, extra sensory experiences that come in you think ah that's that's my guides talking to me okay when i feel that energy or if i get that energy in my ears or I feel that energy around my shoulders or I'm being wrapped in love, I can know that's my guides or that's my angels. So that's how it all started unrolling for me and um, I just started practicing more and more each day. I would uh, link up with my guides or link up with the angels, I'd ask for help and after a period of time you start getting messages coming back from them. Mm-hmm. They, they teach you in the spiritualist church in a circle to empty your mind and to allow your mind to to just settle and become quiet. And, and it's almost like they say you have this mirror of, of your mind where if, if you're always listening on doing things, you can't always hear what's coming in. But when you quiet yourself like you're doing meditation, when energy starts coming in, you, you start sensing, ah, that's, that's, that's an angelic energy coming on or that's one of my guides. And you, you start feeling it. And start sensing it before before long you start picking up vibrations of conversation. You know, I've got your granddad here, you you, you sense your granddad's energy or you sense your, your, your mother's energy and you'll hear a stream of words will start coming through or feelings. And and that's how I know when I go quietly, um, when a message will pop into my head, I think, Well that wasn't my thought. I wasn't thinking about that. Something has come to me. And so over a period of time, you then you're then able to 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 know what is your thoughts and what you're thinking about, mm-hmm. and what is other input input and output. I think I suppose that's how I would call it. Mm-hmm. And uh, from then on, it just it, it just gets stronger and stronger. I suppose because obviously, from from my perspective and from from an, from a, probably a, a number of people's perspectives, how can you determine between what is the you know what is actually your thought and what is coming in and and, and from my skeptical perspective i'm actually thinking and what's coming from the field you know the wider consciousness and that whole connectedness how do, how are you determining where it's coming from it's good, <laughs> i think it's it's down to practice for me um you know and I, I wouldn't say you know i'm i'm the best and i understand all of it but each day that that i work i think like working a muscle it gets stronger and you are able to hold a conversation for longer i imagine you could you can put this a bit like as a child's growing up that that at first maybe they're not able to talk to you for very long it's a small conversation and, and a few giggles and a few chuckles and you know and then as as the child progresses and their intelligence increases and their awareness increases you're able to to talk for longer and have a large conversation and it's like that for me with spirit that um, first I was just getting pictures and and feelings and, and a few a few words would come through. When I first heard a few words, I thought, wow, I, I, I've, I've just heard from my guide. So I've just got a picture and they show me things. <laughs> and then after r- practicing regularly, you see that you're able to take on not just pictures, but you can take pictures and sound and feelings all at the same time. And you're able to say, well, I've got this guide coming through here and they look like this, they sound like that, and they're making me aware of this. And you go, wow. You know, it's like painting a whole picture. And that's what we do with with our 
with our feelings and our thoughts and our beliefs and our what we're able to do anyway. We're just doing it with spirit. They're actually sending us that energy. Does that make sense? Yeah, it's just fascinating about how you're determining the difference between them and, and how you're, you know, how you are. So, so when you're bringing these people in or these spirits in, yeah. um, wh- what? How, how does it feel for you? <laughs> from my, I'm just fascinated about how you then experience uh, it yourself. It, to be honest, um, I gen- I've always had pr- r- r- pretty amazing experiences channeling. When I do channeling nights and when I channel for people, that you can imagine you're generally working with a being who holds a you, whoever I'm channeling, say it's an archangel or it's an ascended master or or it's an advanced. Um, sentient race like the Arcturians they all come in and I will just feel this lovely high vibration and it makes you feel nice just to just to be talking with like minded friends just talking with you now I'm really enjoying it we're talking about something we enjoy we're, we're in a nice heart centered space so it feels good and when they come in they not only hold that space but they, they bring in healing energy as well so if I'm doing a healing with somebody, the energy will move through me, but it will also move through them. So I will get a juicing, a, a juice up of that energy that's moving through me into, into them as well. So I get a boost every time I do this healing work. And, and when I do the channeling, I, I always feel really good afterwards. Um, it doesn't mean that when I link with Spirit World, um, there's, there's different vibratory rates, I suppose. That's what you want to know. Different beings have different vibratory rates okay. um, I could tell this my uncle passed to the spirit world last week and um, I had a little chat with him when he came through and, and I expected him to be really happy but he was a bit grumpy at first <laughs> 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 and it's the first time really or not the first, first time for someone in the family I'd noticed that but then he came, he's come back in a few more times after that and he's getting used to it and he's happier and happier and I thought oh that's interesting so I think it takes time for people um, maybe once they, they go across the spirit world and once they settle in, then their their vibration rate changes probably and they get used to it and enjoy it more. Um, but for some people, they go across and they're, they're, they're happy straight away. So I think I suppose it depends what mood they're in. And then a- angels who come in, they hold a lovely high vibration all the time. I've never had an angel come in that's grumpy. <laughs> <laughs> that's good to know. <laughs> quite, quite like my angels being happy. <laughs> uh, angels always come in with a positive, loving vibration. So you will sense the difference between someone in the spirit world and an angelic vibration. They are different vibrations. I, for me, they are. I, I notice them. Um, when the Arcturians, they have a very strong consciousness. They come in in a very focused way. Mm-hmm. And the Palladians, when they come in, they're very heart-centered. I feel this very expanded heart. My heart starts expanding and feels really good when I link with them. So it's very much with you and your friends. Some of your friends you'll link with and you go, wow, I feel really good when I link with that person. And then with other people, you you feel, you know, maybe very excited or you feel very, uh, if they're, you know, a sad friend and you feel oh, they're a bit grumpy or whatever. Spirit have their own vibration and and depending on what dimension they're in, um, I think the higher the, the dimension, pretty much the happier they are and the more balanced they are, from my, from my experience. Hmm. Have you noticed your own health improving with the channeling that you've been doing? That's a good question. Yeah, I have, why has my health got better? Mm, I don't know. I don't, I'd say I've got, I've got happier. Hmm. I think health-wise... I've, I think I have to take care of myself in lots of ways. So Christmas, I've eaten lots of chocolate, and I need to go down to the gym and work out. <laughs> but I, I would say what they, they really help me with is, my, with is with my heart and my emotions and my beliefs and the way I work with my consciousness. So energetically, I'd say, yes, I'm in, I'm in better shape than I've ever been in. Um, I'm clearer. Um, my emotions are clearer and I, I don't feel hold sadness or depression or or anger or things from the past so much because they've helped me clear quite a lot. Mm. 
Does that make more sense? Yeah, I was just curious because, of course, all the vibrations will, you know, as that's coming through, if it is very heart-centered, then in effect it will affect every cell in your body. And therefore, from my perspective, I would see that that's truly beneficial in regards to to the health at cellular level. Yeah. I I suppose I've never measured myself. We don't have these devices through. (laughs) (laughs) They are somewhere. But it's, it's, I'd love to have devices like that where you can test, you know, you, you know, these, these different elements of the field. That would be fascinating. Or those are going to come online. But you're right. For me, you know, um, all I know is when I started linking with spirit, my life got better. And they taught me, they said that you are a multidimensional being by nature, all of us. We're, we're these amazing beings that have all these, we are able to, live in the third dimension or the, fourth, the, the dimension that we're in, but also sense the other dimensions as well and work with them. So if the spirit world, say, uh, is the next dimension up or if people pass away and they go into the light and they go back home, that's another dimension that you can't touch it physically with your hand, but you're still able to talk with them. Does that make sense? Mm, yes. And the angels, whatever dimension they are in, they're in a, in a dimension that, that, that was not, easy for us to see them and physically touch them but energetically on the spectrum they are there somewhere and we are able to talk with them or sense them so that must mean that we are multidimensional in our state that we are able to link with them so a lot of the teachings or well, one of the main teachings is that they, they bring through is to be multi to learn to accept that you're this lovely multidimensional being that you are able to sense these other these other dimensions, and ask for their help and work with them. So that's been the amazing thing for me that, that I think um, growing up, sometimes you're taught that linking with these other energies isn't normal or it's, you know, that, that you've got to be different or strange. But the more I, I work with spirit, the more I realize that actually we're just learning to wake up and work with these other facets of being, these other dimensions. Hmm. So that's pretty much the best way of saying it to you. <laughs> now you've you've actually got you sent me your bio and you you've actually got quite a wide range of training behind you, including things like naturopathy, nutrition, which fascinated me, um, energy energy healing work and things. Do you do you feel that that journey has been really important for you to have become as open as you are? Yes, uh, I think, like you say, the more things that you learn, the, the, the more it makes you aware of different facets of of the field of source and um i learn each time excuse me i learn each time that i go and do a course or if i go and try a different technique i can see how other people are working with source and how how oh that's maybe something i haven't learned yet and how i can bring that in or how it just opens up my awareness more to to new more wonderful things so um, the energy healing course that I did was was one of the most amazing courses I've done. It, it, it just covered a lot of different um, arenas. So what like, was that exactly? That uh, course we would go. It was uh, with the School of Energy Healing, okay. and it's a three year part time course where you would go five weeks a year to a holistic health centre down in Wales. It was a beautiful place that give you. It was all uh, vegetarian food. Uh, There's no alcohol, and basically they would you would immerse yourselves for a week at a time in each module of, of the course. And so we would do a week of um, linking with angels, uh, uh, process work um, for one or two of those days or one of those days where we would get on a mat with a core energetics practitioner and we would find out where our dark emotions are, where our anger is uh, and where our deep pain is in our system. So that was a, and, and then when you find it, you can bash it out, scream it out, you know, really, really engage with it and find out holding you back. Mm-hmm. We would do that. We would do courses on uh, naturopathy, but they would teach us about naturopathy and some, some of naturopathy. Probably, um, I didn't get a, a diploma in naturopathy like you have, but you know, we would, we would study it. So it would give us an insight that when clients would come to us, we could think about you know, what's going on? Have they got electronic pollution around them? Um, are they eating a correct diet? Are they, are they eat, you know, are they breathing well? Are they, you know, what is it that's, you know, do they work in an airport and do they, do they get all of this radiation? Mm. 
do they get all these fumes and and so it helps you build a picture of when a client comes to see you of what's going on inside them um psychologically what's happened to them in the past what what's going on in their field how much energy they got are they hydrated are they you know you know are, have they got a spirit attached to them we did a, a week of linking learning how to um disconnect people from their entities you know clear them of their entities mm-hmm. um to to help spirits go into the light um we did the the second year of the school was all about the heart center and the heart the the heart layer of that field the astral so that we work with the inner child seeing what's happened in childhood and how these uh parts of our inner child might get disconnected or, or be upset so we helped we learned to work with the inner child we learned to work with entities um the relationship cords that connect us with each other these lines of light that go from one chakra to the other have you heard about these relationship cords that yeah for a relationship with someone yeah of light goes between you and them like a cord you know when they say someone's mm. a heart cord so sometimes these cords uh, will take on the shape of whatever's going on in the relationship so for instance if you're in a relationship with someone and it was all going well the cords would be nice and bright and full of light and love mm. But if the relationship was going in, a, uh, in an unhealthy direction, what, if there was anger or, or control and manipulation, the cords would take on that state as well. <laughs> so like you've got cords wrapped around people or around their necks. From yeah. Organ. So you, you, uh, you, you see the cords psychically. They teach you how to see, see the cords and, and unwrap them and clean them or disconnect them if they're really unhealthy. And then people can choose to reconnect a cord of light if they want to. <laughs> So you were really widely trained, basically. It was, it was a great training. We we learnt meditation. We learnt to link with our guides. Um, we learnt about the Merkaba. Um, we learnt about DNA and activating your DNA. <laughs> it was really good training. Um, and it, it was called more of a, a mystery school, this school. They said yeah. we want to teach you about the mysteries of life as well. Yeah. He, the chat mark who would run the school was also channeling as well. He would channel someone called the Council of Twelve. Um, and I, I believe they're, you know, they are they, they're a star race. They're a group of star races who come together for healing to help planet Earth heal. So when I saw them, I thought, wow, this is really interesting. You know, he's channeling um, star races, and that's what what I was just beginning to learn to channel. So it, it took me forward, and I thought, this is great. This is what I want to learn. And that's what you effectively do now, isn't it? Predominantly, you, you're channeling the star races, is my understanding. Uh, it's interesting that I get a mixture. Okay. Uh, but uh, I work with the Archangels quite a lot. Archangel Sandifer and Archangel Michael I work with closely. Archangel Well, they, they're kind of uh, three ones I, I work with a lot. And then some Ascended Masters come in. Um, but predominantly, uh, a lot of the time, I've, I've been, I suppose... It's because I'm I'm really connecting well with them, and I'm really enjoying the relationships with these these new star races. I'm working a lot with star races at the moment. <laughs> it, there, there is a mixture, but you're right. There is more, I'd say, you know, with star races, and I I really enjoy working with them. Now, do you want to just explain these star races? Because I, I am still at the point where I haven't read a huge amount about these star races because I've got so many other things to kind of read about. But um, I'm fascinated because my skepticism is still around the star race aspect of what you do it's not about the experience i get it's about the star race part of it just explain the star races uh, that you actually hook up with okay it makes sense i am it's quite far out isn't it <laughs> yeah sure <laughs> no one must stay <laughs> around that you kind of star race you think well they're miles away so okay after i started channeling guides and angels um i my soul energy, my heart was really wanting me to connect, to go and connect with star races. My soul was, was really pushing me. I, I, I don't get that very often when my soul goes, you, you know, really go and do that. I had that to go on the energy healing course, and I, I found that in relationships, sometimes with partners, but also with this. So I started looking, and I found the, the Palladians um, through books. And I, when I find something, I go and have a look on the internet. I go and find out who's written the best books, and then I go and study the books, and then I see what happens from there. If I if the, if it looks something interesting and good, then I'll I'll start you know investing energy into it. So I found the Palladians, and I found 
two or three people who looked like they'd written lots of books and they were the, looked like the people who knew the most about them. So I bought their books. And one of them was by Amora Kuan Yin. She's a healer out in Mount Shasta in America. And she basically has made a connection with, with the Pleiadians and has written books and has healing techniques for you to connect with them. And so I followed this book and I started making a connection with the Pleiadian Mysteries of Light. And they are, they, when their energy came in, it was just a, or like a, uh, grandfather or grandmother's love that they have for you. This lovely heart centered love that is just, you know, always there for you without judgment. And it, it would be like, you know, they know where we're at and then they know we get upset or we're mixed up and they want to help us and they do it very gently. So I found this lovely, benevolent race called the Pleiadians who other people had found and I started working with them and I really enjoyed it and this went on while I was at the School of Energy Healing probably for about three to four years uh, I just worked with them and then uh, after that I, I realized you know there's other star races and it's safe for me to work with them and I, I learned about the Hathors who Tom Kenyon who's a sound healer he's very popular uh, out there he channels the Hathors I'd link with them um but it, I, I, I link with them a lot. Then I link with the Syrians, and I found the Syrian, the Archangelic League of the Light, and they're a very advanced race. And um, then I link, I found Andromedans, and they're in the next, the next galaxy. And that that feels like somewhere I've been before. It's an amazing thing to say. You think, you know, I'm on this planet at the moment, but I felt like when I link with them, I feel like I'm going home. So. Personally, for me, I feel like I've been in Andromeda before. And my t- learn up to now is I think that we choose to come to this planet and, and, and do what we've got to do here. But I think we also have the chance when we go back home, we choose to go then on to other planets if we wish. If, if, our, if our work is complete here and we've done what we need to do, then I think we, we, we choose to go all over you know, the universe. I think it's a big playground. Why do they want to connect with you? Right, that's a good question. Well, really, it was me wanting to connect with them. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so you've effectively opened yourself up to channel them and they've taken that opportunity. So who's out there and what I'm capable of? And, and you know what it's like, the more you open yourself up um, and the more you look to see what's good for you out there, you know, what what different flavours are there, what what things... <laughs> me and i found i only what i found within me is that i only want to work with the, the most the, the you know the most amazing the best star races i don't you know i don't want to link with ones that are going to do me any good so um i allowed my guidance to come in and i have probably after the palladians and then and these small linkings i made with the syrians and the hatos and the andromedans i the arc started coming on my radar it came in about Probably three or four times within a, within a year, I saw Octarians around me in different places. <laughs> and I thought, oh, this is interesting. Um, I don't know much about them. And then I I started reading about them on the net, and I thought, well, they look like a really advanced race. Uh, I thought, how come one day oh, I haven't linked with them? So suddenly, I made the link with them, and I said, the Octarians, I'd like to make a link with you. And they made a link with me, and we had a chat. And then that was it. It, it. it just faded out. It wasn't like the Palladians where they would visit me every day and come and talk to me. The Arcturians didn't do that. But then suddenly, about a year or a year and a half later, they came in, clear as day, and said, you're ready. We'd <laughs> like to work with you now. Fantastic. So I thought, oh, that's interesting. And they said, we're not the most advanced, you know. We're not the most advanced out there, but we are pretty advanced. We're the most advanced, you know, in your galaxy. And I said, that's good for me. I'd love to link with you and, and, and learn some more. <laughs> so that's how my link with the Arcturians began. And they've been in pretty much working with me every day since. So what information do you tend to channel from these star races? It's interesting. They, they will, I suppose they'll come in and work with me on different things. Say uh, from the past, I suppose for my journey, my heart, I closed my heart down from experiences maybe from this life and my past lives as well I think so I've needed probably more help opening my heart feeling safe and secure in my heart and learning how to just uh, and open my heart up more and just allow myself to be free and, and, and to love unconditionally 
and you know it's a struggle on earth sometimes I think after you've had you go through different relationships and you can close your heart down and protect yourself and sort of put a wall around you so for me I would say most of the time it's it's just working either with the heart working with my emotions and helping me to open up to receive more to 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 open up and go yeah I can have this or I, I deserve that so they all come in and saying, how do you feel about this? And they'll, they say, they say, would you like to work on it? Would you like us to work with you on it? And I will. So they say, sit down quietly, come into your heart and just focus on this issue that you have. And then what they will do, they will send energy to me. They will send energy into that. That's their, their way of working. They will send their particular vibration to me and it will help expand it. It will help me say I'm holding the angle. Don't love myself enough. Therefore, I don't give myself enough love. Uh, or I don't give myself the things I desire. What they will do is they'll say, sit with that energy, and they'll send their energy to it, and that will help me relax into it more and work through that energy. So I'll, 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 I'll be able to work through the, the, the beliefs and the emotions that keep that in place of why, why I don't deserve things or why I don't give myself those things. And over a period of time, it starts releasing. It's almost like... Um, what is it? I suppose if, if you, 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 you blow down a tube and whatever's stuck in, if I, if I tell you, okay, well, I'm going to blow down the end of this tube and all you've got to do is wriggle the tube around a bit, you know, and hold, hold that awareness, whatever's blocking in there will come out. So that's basically how they work. They send their energy, their higher vibration energy to me and us when we're doing our meditations and our group work. And their energy helps, helps move it and break it up and give it, give it more, Life, it brings life to it and awareness. And then suddenly this issue that you had starts going, it's not such a big issue. It starts waking up. I start, you know, bringing more awareness to it. And then before I know it, it's, it's, it's clearing more. So yeah, they have this lovely way. They all have different tools for working. Mm -hmm. The have light chambers. They can put you in a chamber. The Arcturians seem to come in and help you with your consciousness and they seem to send focused uh, focused energy to whatever it is we're doing and I've seen other star races they all seem to have different you know ways of working just like if you went to another planet we we mine the earth or we do certain things in different ways if you go to another planet they will do it in a completely different way because they've advanced in completely different ways then their speech system maybe will be different some will be working telepathically uh, they'll be drinking and eating different things and they'll be working as a group, maybe better than what we do. So I think it depends on how advanced the race is and how they do things. So, but they, all I can tell you, there, there are um, many races out there. Uh, I'm not sure all of them are, are, you know, all are on our side and want to support us, but most of them are that I've seen. And, um, they, they know that we're going through this enormous shift down here on planet Earth, this big evolution this big evolutional leap is going on and they want to help us move through it and I suppose it makes sense because we're their neighbours and you know we are part of their you know star family now you talk about them being our neighbours now Rich in the uh, chat box has just said Arcturians what star system are they from if they're, from, if they're our neighbours <laughs> he's just curious I don't know they're, I don't, to be honest I can't tell you I know from the Arcturus there is a, a star system called Arcturus all right. Okay. Hopefully that answers your question, Rich. I've got a book of theirs called We Are the Octurians. I'm about a quarter of the way through it. What I'll do, I'll get that information and bring that forward for you. Yeah, if you put it in the if you put it in the Skype box, I will then transfer it to the chat box for everybody else. Um, is this something that anyone can learn to do? I think it is. I think it depends where you're at in, on on your journey, how open you are. Um, if you want, if you if you're prepared to sit quietly, and, and if in your mind that you seriously want to connect with high, high vibration beings and receive their help and and hold a healthy relationship with them in some shape or form, then yeah, I would really recommend it to you. I think you like any relationship, you'll get out of it what you put in. So it's be skeptic. It's good to ask, you know, um, what is it going to do for me? You know, is this something I really want to do? 
But it's, it's, yeah, I think, suppose if you look at all the relationships in your life, those are the things that bring you a lot of meaning. So, um, the relationships that I've created with these star beings are wonderful relationships. They, you know, they really, they've really helped me a lot. And, um, they've helped a lot of my friends and, and, and other people, you know, who've come in for help. So, yeah, I can, I can say that it, it, it's something that you, we can all do. And it's just something you have to work at. Just like any relationship. Do you, yeah, this is going to be a daft question, but uh, but from my perspective, is it that you hear them all the time? Is it like white noise, and or is it that you can ju- you just tune in and you, it is effectively that like you create a channel for them to come through? I think it's the more the the, the latter. Um, I can get on with my, with my day and not, and not get a, a message at all. You know, I can go for a, a period of time if I if I got things to do and I get on with it. I might get a little bit of guidance come in. Say I, there's a lot of energy there, maybe that's not so good for me. Goes down your energy field. To get a little bit of guidance, or um, just protect yourself, or things like that. Or if I sit with someone who needs some healing, they might give me a little bit of guidance and say that person could do with uh, a channeling session, or a bit of guidance, and then I'll ask. Them. I sit with the person when, when the time's right. I say, "Would you would you like some guidance?" And quite most of the time, my friends say, "Yeah, I'd love some." <laughs> Beautiful, this will come through, and it will help them with whatever situation. It will give a different perspective for them and give them some guidance. So that's pretty much how it works. Um, they're very respectful. They they only come in, you know, when when I need help. I I can tell you, I I, I went on a a course for a week and I was very tired out. I was doing a shaking a week of week. Of, I don't know if you ever heard of shaking, but there's a there's a, a healing technique that people use by shaking their body and it helps shake loose everything. And I did it. I went to Italy and I did it for a week and um, it was a bit of a crazy week. But I <laughs> hit the wall and I couldn't do any more. And I went back for a rest in the uh, in, in in my room and the Pleiadians came in straight away and they just said, would you like a healing session? I said, I'd love one. And you know, half an hour later, I was back up again and I was back out there. <laughs> How lovely is that? So they, what I've learned is they are, once you make a connection with these star beings, because even though they're a long way away, they're able to tune into you by energy and they feel where you're at. They, they're they able to sense way much better than we are or than most people. Maybe not me, I'm really psychic people out there, but you can imagine the most psychic people out there. That's how they naturally live it seems <laughs> so they know when i've reached the wall they know if i'm upset even though they're on another planet at the center of the, our galaxy you know they are able to to tune into us from a long way away so all experiences i've had so far they were they are very happy to come and help me especially when i'm you know up against it and they're able to to do healing from a distance which is amazing and for it to be powerful healing. And they don't ask anything in return. They just want us to evolve and be healthy and happy like they are. So that's, isn't that, isn't that a wonderful thing? You know, that people are, are spirits, you know, beings on other planets are, are caring enough to want to help you and your. Gosh, absolutely. On the same planet, I think. <laughs> it is. It's fabulous. Yeah. So, so Andy. Yeah. Is it possible for you to do a channeling now? Are you, do you feel you can do one? Hmm. Certainly, yes. Just have a little drink. Right. Okay. So, since that's a yes, I'm going to do a disclaimer for everybody because um, it's going to put us in a meditative state. So, let me just do that first. So, okay. Do not listen to this session if you are driving. So, until about quarter past one. Okay, so it's twelve. It's about twelve forty-four at the moment. So, to about quarter past one, this session is going to actually be one where you're going to need to not be driving or engaging in any activity that requires your attention. Um, if you're using any machinery of any sort, you need to either stop that or you need to switch this off at this point. Particularly if you're listening on a pod. Okay, so make yourselves comfortable because Andy's going to do a channeled session for us, which should be fascinating. <laughs> Okay. Right, I'm going to hand over to Andy now then. Okay. Okay, let's go. So the Arcturians are going to come in for us and, and give a channeling session. 
Okay. Hello, everyone. Greetings to you all from Arcturus. We are an, an advanced race of star beings, not that unlike yourselves. And we just like to come through and give a, a nice, gentle, easy session for you to let you know who we are and just to make you aware that we are here um, just in a very loving and peaceful way. We don't seek anything from you. Um, we seek to empower you like what you would seek to empower those people in your race to do the best that you can. We uh, we know roughly what state of affairs planet Earth is in. And from that, we are able to understand where you are as a group and then where some of you are as in individuals. And then from that place, we can help you. We can go, okay, well, we think you could probably do some help in this area or that area. So... If you look around on planet Earth at the moment, there are quite a few different races that are coming in to help you. And we are one of many who have chosen to assist planet Earth move into this new era that she's destined uh, and is moving into now. So it's your choice whether you'd like to join us now. You can just sit back and listen and, and check us out and see what you think of us. And if, if you're feeling brave and you, you want to drop into your heart and just let us guide you, then we will just guide you on a guided visualization. And what that does is when we will help you with the guided visualization, it just gives you permission to go into your heart and rest in there and, and be guided into these facets of your being, which maybe you're not aware of. Maybe you are. And if you are, that's, that's fabulous. Um, but if you're not, it gives you a chance to, to work on your energy field more. And with our support and help, we can help you wake up those facets more in your energy field. And then you, you have an even better awareness of who you are as a, as a being, a source. So we'll tell you a little bit more about the Arcturians. We've evolved. We're not going to go into a massive detail for you, but we, we will tell you that We've evolved as a star race, uh, way more than that your race has evolved so far. So it puts us in, in a good position uh, as one of your neighbours to help you and say, well, we've trodden the path that you trodden. We know the pitfalls. We know what to watch out for, and we can help guide you in these certain techniques. Our technology has advanced a lot, like yours has recently. But the main things that we've had to advance is, was, was how we, we work together as a group, how we all chose to live as one on a planet, to respect each other and care about each other and love each other. And then how we choose to create a reality that, that affects all of us. Because your reality that you create affects the reality of everyone on your planet. So we try to create a, health, a very healthy reality for each other, not just ourselves. And when you do that, then you all have to look at how your consciousness works. And is your consciousness in a healthy state or not a healthy state? So we really prize and honor the consciousness because it is the vehicle that all of your senses and all of your awareness moves through. So if your consciousness is awake, uh, you are more than able to work in a loving and heart-centered way. So we choose to bring this um, conscious awareness to you, to share it with you and to help you uh, awaken these different facets of your consciousness and your energy fields so that your energy moves healthily and happily and that you move towards to create a healthy earth for yourselves and for everybody else. So that's pretty much us. Well, we could go on a lot about who we are and what we do but it's not really going to help you and we've only got so much time but if you want to read up on us some more, Andy will leave a book, uh, a name of a book that you can check us out some more. And um, there's plenty of information on the internet about the Arcturians. So, um, but know that we are a heart-centered, benevolent race, and we have um, your highest, your highest goals at stake. We we honour you, and we want to see you 
all have the most amazing life on planet Earth. We, you know, we want our neighbors and our star family to be a happy bunch. The happier you are, the happier that we all are as a, as a group. Okay. So we're just going to do a quick meditation with you uh, to show you what we can do and how we can help you. And then if you'd like to do any more of that in the future, you can invite us to come and work with you or study us some more. Okay. So we'll be sending an energy out to you for all those listening to this. So just relax. Come into your hearts. Just let go of everything that you're doing. Breathe. Let go of your day. Let go of whatever has happened to you in the last few hours. And just be. Just be this amazing being that you are. Feel your heart. Feel the energy in your heart. How it beats you. How it brings life to you. There is an energy inside you that brings you to life. We want you just to concentrate on that energy in your heart. Because it's not always something which you're aware of, but it, it's working all of the time. Your source energy, we can call it. Just notice how you feel when you connect to this source energy in your heart. Do you feel relaxed with it? Are you in a good relationship with it? Do you doubt it? Do you go, yeah, I've got source energy here. It feels great. I love it. Or do you go, I don't know what that is. That sounds like a complete load of... (laughs) So, if you're with the first one, that's great. You're in harmony with your source energy. If it's the second one, it means you're disconnected from your source energy or you doubt it. And for those people, this is what we'd like you to to concentrate or work with some more. The more in tune you are with your heart and your source energy, this amazing energy that guides you, the more comfortable your life will be. For this energy talks to you and nourishes your field and guides you. So I'd like you just to just to completely relax into this energy as much as you can and just feel your awareness grow and with a relationship to this field of light which gives you light. You might feel a warmth. You might see a bright light. If you drift off, that's okay. Just keep coming back. Keep coming back to the center of your heart, to the light in there. And just feel this amazing relationship that you have. You should feel better when you just connect with this energy. Just hold your focus with this energy and see what it has to tell you. It's a two-way relationship you have with this energy. Just notice if it's two-way. If it isn't, allow it to be. Give yourself permission. Just see how much you can enjoy it and let it talk to you. Let it nourish you. Let it completely be one with you, like a a bright sun. Imagine you have the sun in your heart. This is your source energy. This is what keeps you alive. It brings you here. There are studies on your planet, no doubt, that show you that you have an energy field. Underneath your physical body, you have fields of light. Source energy has to, for you to be there as a conscious being, you have to be 
charged and energized by a field. For you to have all these amazing abilities that you have, it, it's not just a coincidence. You have a, an amazing source energy within you which guides you. And the more you tune into that energy, the stronger you become. The more faith you have in your source and your abilities. And you know that this power is always in you. It's always beating your heart. It's always guiding you. It's always showing you the way forward in some shape or form and showing you the way. So if you listen to this source energy within you, your life gets richer and easier. You know that your source energy is there supporting you and guiding you. I'd just like you to notice your awareness of this source energy that you have within your heart energy, your heart area. And notice the consciousness that you hold around this source energy in your heart. Is it a good consciousness? Is it awake? Is it happy? Is it bright? You hold a consciousness about everything. What consciousness do you hold about your source energy in your heart? Just allow it to expand. Allow yourself to have the most amazing consciousness of your source. You've probably never been taught this before. It's a a new technique for you, maybe. So we'd like you just to give it a go and notice what your consciousness is. Just keep coming back to it. What's the consciousness I hold about my source? Just allow it to get brighter and stronger and healthier and happier. So you're really one with it. You feel great about your source. This power, you should feel it bright and strong and healthy. This energy loves you. You're one with it. It guides you. It's free. It's empowering you day by day to live and create whatever you wish. But it also shows you the best way to do things. And nourishes you with all the energy that you need. So just allow your consciousness to grow and get bigger and healthier and happier with this source energy you hold. And you might find resistance to it. You might say, I don't want to do it. Or you might say, wow, I really love this. I can't get enough of it. It makes me feel really good. And the more you feel your source, the more you know what to do. The better relationship that you are in with it, the easier life is for you. The easier it is for you to move forward and create what it is you want to do. Because you trust it. It's taking care of you and nourishing you. So just talk to your source, if you wish, and tell it what it is it is that you'd like, what it is that you'd like help with, or that you just really are in awe of it, or whatever it is you're feeling. Just ask for whatever it is that you need. If you'd like it to get stronger and healthier, if you'd like to understand it more, if you'd like to hold a stronger relationship with your source energy, you want to be happier. And you might find resistance within you to that because of the conditioning of the past. If you've had conditioning from a, a religion or a, a group or, or an atheism or whatever it is, by saying, you, you know, you're not the source, you're just chemistry, then that's maybe conditioning that you have in there which may block you from feeling it so just ask for help in 
clearing any conditioning you have to knowing that you're your source, that you're this amazing source being. Oh, it's all this incredible ability. If you have all these abilities, it's not going to be just chemistry. There's going to be more to it. So we'd like to encourage you to come into a lovely, strong, healthy relationship with your source energy and hold the best of awareness and consciousness of it that you can. And that puts it into a new bracket for you. You think, right, I understand. I want to have a deep relationship with my source. Where I feel it, I understand it, it talks to me, I talk to it. It's a two-way relationship. And it's always feeding you. No matter what you do, it's feeding you with energy and guiding you. But we put blocks up, or we notice that most people put blocks up in their hearts for many different reasons, to feel safe, to feel secure, to feel in control, to be angry, many different reasons. And so what that does is that blocks sometimes your ability to sense what your source is telling you. And it blocks sometimes your relationship with your source. It makes you feel that you're limited. You're not important or you're, you're not good enough or you're you're unworthy or all of these things. But if you hold this amazing relationship with your source, which is, which is always there, it's infinite, it's always blessing you, it's always giving you what you ask for, if you allow it to, then you will always believe and know that you are more than just this body. You are this incredible vehicle of light and love, this source, energy. So on our first encounter today with you, with the thought we'd like to show you that you are more than just a mere mortal. You are amazing, divine, beautiful source energy that is pure, that is divine, that is healthy and happy in its purest form here in your heart. And the more you entertain this pure divine love in your heart, the healthier you become, the happier you are. Because you know truly that is what you are, not these other identifications that you may have learned along the way. And the proof is in the pudding. So try it. If, if it's no good, then you can say, you know, that was a load of, you know, baloney, whatever you call it on earth. And then if it does nourish you and you feel good and you go, wow, I can feel this essence, this source, this spirit in my heart, which empowers me, which helps me move forward, then you can go, yeah, there is some sense in what they're talking about. We hope it's the latter one. And we just like to encourage you to Drop deeper and deeper into your relationship with your source and your heart. Go as deep as you can, as you'd like to. Just feel the depth of your source energy and your connection to it. Ask it to make you, make you aware of how powerful it is. Ask it to show you the way. Show you the way you need to go. And it will never lie to you. It will always tell you the way to go. For whatever reason you need to learn. You'll always be guided to the highest and best place with your heart and your soul energy. The source energy. We hope you're enjoying this session. And that you're getting as much out of it as we are. We're enjoying connecting with you and just 
guiding you on this beautiful journey inside yourself, inside this beautiful source that you are. Okay. Any resistance that you have to being the source, you can ask for help. So I'd like to help clear my resistance to being whole and healthy with my source energy. You can ask the angels, you can ask your guides, and you can ask us, the Octarians, to come and help you. Or whoever else that you may like to work with. We will all come in and help you the best we can. But it's that your focused intent which helps you the most when you focus your energy then we're all able to work with you with your focus okay I'd like you to find the brightest energy you can in your heart center. I'd like you to go to the, just encourage you to just go on a little journey and find the brightest energy that you can in there. Just sense it, either with your heart or with your knowing. Just go towards the brightest energy in your heart center. And we'd like you just to sit in it and, and feel it or swim in it. Just feel this beautiful, bright, high vibration source energy and notice how it makes you feel. You may notice, you may yawn or you may shift around a bit. might be energy moving. It's a very powerful place to sit in your power center. You should feel like you're sitting in the sun. You should feel strong and bright, powerful. Let this energy nourish your whole energy field. Just let it nourish your physical body, your emotional, your mental body, your, your astral. Let it move through your whole field. Give it permission to nourish your whole energy body, your whole field. You can also give it permission to connect you with Mother Earth. And flow down your spine. Send the line of light all the way down through your legs, out through your feet, or just straight the way down, all the way down to the center of the earth. Grounding you. Connecting you with the earth, your mother. She is your physical mother here on earth. She feeds you. She nourishes you with earth energy. Without her, your bodies would not be able to sustain themselves. So you have another mother. Um, The earth is like a mother to you. And your heart energy, this source energy, can connect you to the mother. Just ask it to connect you down. You can connect with the mother in a heart-centered way. Say hello to her. And you'll feel nice and grounded. You can breathe this energy from the center of the earth up to your heart. That's grounding. If you ever want to feel grounded, this is a grounding technique. We draw energy up from the earth into your heart and it strengthens the heart balances your field just let this energy keep moving up to the heart (sighs) 
when you walk out into nature and you connect with nature, this is what the energy you feel, this beautiful earth energy. Earth has a certain vibration which nourishes you, brings you into balance, into harmony. So whenever you need balancing, I would suggest you could do this technique. Not to go out into nature and to do it, even more powerful. Just to become one with the earth. Okay, I think we're drawing to a close. We've, yeah, we've done enough there for you. So hopefully from this exercise, you'll notice through, through your energy field, you are able to sense your source. This great power that that sits within your energy field that you are connected to. It connects you to all life. And that you're also able to connect that energy down to the earth and to ground yourselves. So you feel nice and secure in your source energy is being grounded on earth. You are a source being here on earth. Amongst the stars with all these other races. We're all here together. As for one. We hope you've enjoyed this channeling session. We look forward to linking with you again, either personally or in a group format. Or not, as the case may be. <laughs> we send you our love from across the stars. And thank you for your time. Thank you. Mm, that was nice. That was lovely. That's nice. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> open your eyes if you haven't already and stretch if you need to you might need to have a good stretch after that oh, and put your feet on the floor <laughs> okay I'm with you wow gosh I don't really want to say I just feel wonderful after that thank you very very much um, how do you feel when you do those that sort of channeling well, I just felt like I went into a very deep space, and um, I feel good. I feel expanded. My heart feels like it's big. Um, the uh, the uh, guidance that we just did, I I followed it, and I sat in my heart, and it felt amazing. I went into this lovely heart, this sun in my heart. I could feel this lovely, bright, beautiful place, which empowers me and guides me. And, um, yeah, I needed that just as much as you did, probably. <laughs> <laughs> Do you actually ever find it draining? Mm, I think maybe if, if I was, well, I, I don't, but I, I could think of times maybe when, it, when I might be tired or I might be run down. But still, I think when I channel, I've never got into a negative state, really, from channeling. It's very much, I'd see it like having conversations with you or with others but I'm just having multi-dimensional conversations. I think if I did it a lot, um, without, yeah, without, without doing other things, probably, it probably would time me out, but most of the time I just get lots of really good positive energy. I just, you know, my skepticism, like I say, originally was high and then you, know, you did two of these sessions um, in one evening and the first session, I felt like my body had been, um, had electricity going through it. I was explaining it to my friend who's actually a, um, he's a jointer, electrical jointer and been doing big cabling. And he said it was, he explained it back to me in regards to it was almost like I had arcing. So going throughout my body and the synapses, I felt like I was truly connected and I had a heightened awareness. And I just felt this whole flooding of, of almost a uh, high energetic flow going through me and you know the 45 minutes that the first session kind of lasted for just seemed to disappear in a second for me and I was amazed I was amazed at how different it made me truly feel and how yeah how my awareness just seemed to almost be blown apart and I was just almost on a heightened alert uh, in a good way not a, not in a stress way and I couldn't wait for the second session and you know your sessions have been astonishing for me in many ways because not not on a 
a thinking level, not on a mind level, but on a personally, on a cellular experience level, on that sort of experiential level, because I have truly felt it in uh, uh, in every cell of my body sometimes when I've, you know, when I've been to your sessions. And that's where my skepticism has, has gone, because I truly believe health. That's where your health lies, you know, in, in, in hooking into yourself at a cellular level and understanding that every cell has to feel good about itself. And you, your sessions definitely make me feel good about myself. Yeah. Now, Jim and Lorraine say in the um, chat box, that was lovely and was well cheered, chilled. So they're saying thanks. <laughs> but um, Stingray saying, uh, must be good, even I got into it. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Captain Stingray, as we call him. And uh, as he uh, marshals my chat box. Andy, uh, how do people get in touch with you? to actually take part in your channel sessions because they are absolutely lovely. Yeah, okay, that's great. Um, I do, I'm just starting to do more channeling sessions. I've had kind of a, a, a couple of channeling sessions where we, we have a group of about 12, 12 people, um, but I know they're getting more popular. So what I'm going to do, I think I'll, I'm going to organize some more sessions. Um, maybe I'll do some over the internet and I'll, I'll do some, um, some some group work in South London where I am. I'm in Surrey in South London. But for those of you that that can't um, come to there and would like an internet session, maybe I'll I'll give some details out and um, you can watch out for uh, my website and and a link that I'll send out to you. And then if you'd like to come on online and have a session, then we we can organise that. That that would be wonderful. Okay. Do you have a, a website or? Uh, an email that you'd like to give out over the air or do you want to give them me and I'll put them on the pod Thanks, shall I it's, it's just my normal email andy-finlayson at ntlworld.com okay. and it's got a new site in construction so uh, I can't give you a website that's, at the moment that's I'll okay look. so if anybody wants more information about Andy um, I attend the session so in effect give me uh, either p- privately PM me in the chat box or um, send me an email via the um, www.passporttochange.co.uk website and I will put you directly in touch with him. Andy, that was fabulous. Absolutely fabulous. I feel wonderful and I don't really care what everybody else feels because I feel great. <laughs> no, that's not true. You know I want you to all feel absolutely beautiful, which is why I invited him. Thank you very, very much. much. Look forward to seeing you again sometime soon. And we're going to have the cult next. What, what, the cult Elemental, I've been told. Elemental Light. And uh, Nick's going to take over. So that's cool. Doing some music. I'm back. Hoorah. You're all beautiful. I love that track. It's fabulous. I do. Indeed. We need to the cult at the moment. Oh, how was that anyway for you all? Wasn't that just lovely? I know you probably all wanted to be busy on a Saturday morning, something upbeat, and actually, what did I do? <sighs> the beautiful Andy Finlay is so basically doing an amazing channeling, and honestly, he does the most fabulous channelings, and um, they are mind blowing. They, they connect in, in so many ways, on so many different levels, and my skepticism really was high before I actually met him. And uh, you know, if you get the opportunity, do you know, do experience it and, uh, and everything. So, someone else is asking, is it safe yet to turn the radio on? The answer is no, someone. So, that's told him. And um, apparently he loves my shows and the bits in between you talking are the best. You're absolutely right, someone. Who invited you out your cave? Anyway, go back, go on. And the lovely Rich says he's uh, basically experiencing swirling like a vortex and purple in his heart. That's what it's all about, isn't it? It's about experiencing these things. And I just think that's fabulous. Anyway, thank you. And Alan, as always, is posting lots of stuff for us to read. There's stuff from Green Med Info this time, which is often quite well researched as well. So I quite like Green Med Info about the flu shots. Oh, and talking about harm you, harming your heart. You know, well, if, the, if today's all about heart energy, then yes, definitely. You know, flu shots harm you on so many different levels, but definitely ruin your heart energy. My God. So, and Rich is playing his gongs this afternoon now. How do I follow that? Anyway, I'm sure Captain Stingray will say something like that. But yes, beautiful gongs. I was looking at uh, trying to get, I'm uh, hoping to get uh, Chantal Fabrisson at some stage who actually does sound therapy and uh, works with gongs and things like that. And to do a, a session, 
online for us all. Wouldn't that be fabulous <laughs> to have all these therapy sessions online? Uh, and Captain Stingway is asking, can we get some purple hearts? Oh. <laughs> Show someone in the chat box or sort you out there. Stingray. <laughs> anyway. Oh, where do I go? I'm really quite too I'm almost too chilled out, so I just carry on playing music for the afternoon. Anyway. Lots of it for me is about consciousness with health, you know, and becoming more conscious about you, your body, your mind. You know, and, and allowing messages wherever they come from, kind of, you know, for me it's the field at the moment, you know, to come in. You know, wherever they are, you know, and listen. We just don't listen enough. We we just don't, you know. We don't take time to quiet the mind so that, you know, our space to allow us to hear what the body's got to say or the mind has to say or even the field has got to say to us. Then, <sighs> Rich, are you saying, yes, Debs, that would be great? Are you saying that to the purple hearts that Kurt's in Stingway is trying to get hold of? <laughs> But yeah, yeah, I think it'd be a good idea if I can get uh, Chantel to do a, a gong session on, on the air. Wouldn't that be lovely? It would be lovely. Anyway, becoming a, more aware of your body, you know, for me is absolutely key for good health. Um, you know, you cannot have good health if you, you're not, if you're constantly, you know, concentrating on, on what is around you. You know, you, you have to stop and listen um, to, you know, to how, you know, how you, how you do things, what you do, you know, what you're eating, how it's all making you feel. You know, we, we run roughshod so many times over our own body, our own feelings, even in the pursuit of what we think will make us actually happy. And, it, you know, in, in, in some determined future that we may not even get to, you know, you know, what about now? You know, what about how it feels now on that journey to get there? You know, the journey is what matters. The vehicle of your body is the only vehicle that you'll ever have. The only true vehicle that you'll have. You need to listen to it. You need to listen to what it truly needs. You need to create that space for yourself so you can experience it. Hopefully, I gave you some space today to experience. You know, we're often so unaware of how we feel. Actually, just, you know, at the fundamental level of what we eat, you know, when we do something, that we ignore the signs for years. We put up with pain and discomfort. We carry on and on until we finally, you know, break down with disease and suffering. We hardly live our lives with enjoyment. What happens to the enjoyment? Why are we doing that? What's well, such a waste? You know. Andy said to me in his bio, he said he's been in, in pursuit of that eternal question. Why are we here? Well, whilst we are, you know, finding that out, which will probably take us the entirety of our physical lives, you know what? You need to be able to enjoy it. <laughs> you need to have fun. You need to experience it in every cell of your body. And I truly hope that you experienced his session in every cell of your body. And you truly got in touch with the connection that it actually can make. Ah, oh, the pain and suffering we have to put ourselves through. You know, it can be totally unnecessary. You know, if we stopped and took some time to listen and go into ourselves and to take that space and ask ourselves, often, you know, what are the hard questions about what we're doing and why we're doing it and if it's the right thing for us even? You know, I saw someone this week and they just wouldn't, you know, they wanted to do the physical stuff, which was the nutrition. And actually the work I, I was doing, you know, I could do with them was going to, be just a patching up exercise it's all about you know for them it's about they had to listen to what was going on why they were doing it what was driving them because that was what was truly creating their ill health and the disease in their body it wasn't the nutrition they had health on the plate they had all the best supplements they were still ill they were still ill for a reason you know so many people now, you know, in our culture, and our culture, it's often determining that which, you know, that you, you know, you've got to continue working and working, ignoring, and be able to continue. You know, we we use these sticking plasters, we suppress. You know, we use approaches that are just suppressing all the time. Just patch me up and get me back out again is almost the philosophy. You know, you've got your lens tip stuff. Don't worry, I'll deaden the feeling, and then we'll get back out again into the affray. You don't have to take any time off work. You don't have to take any time off from your busy, busy life. God forbid you might want to actually get in touch with yourself and realise that that job is killing you. That lifestyle's killing you. 
I used to say to my poor naturopath, I did, you know, I, I said, patch me up, tell me what, what's wrong, give me the supplements, tell me the diet that I need to be doing, and then get me back out there, Jean. I treated it like a bloody war zone. <laughs> I really did. I went, I was like, she was like the paramedic on the side of the uh, field, <laughs> patch me up, you know, she used the magic sponge and back on her was. <laughs> You know, we used suppressing medications. We used suppressing alcohol and drugs and foods to dull this internal pain that we have. Yeah, all the time, and that's what they are about. You know, all this stuff that they're putting out is just to indulge that pain so you don't experience it. Because if you woke up, you know, if you woke up to that pain, you'd go, "Actually, they really don't want that." That's not enjoyment. You know. Because it means we've got to listen. We have to do the hard work. We have to become honest with ourselves, don't we? You know, about unhappy our life sometimes is. And how out of balance it's become. And how lacking of enjoyment it sometimes gets. Blimey. What's going on in the chat box? I've become really chilled out today. Oh, God, stingray. You really are. <laughs> <laughs> I'm obviously not going to read that out, Stingray, but it's very funny, I have to say. <laughs> she says it all low, please. Like I expected it to be anywhere, but in the gutter. <laughs> Honestly. And then the, for me, it's about health, it's about getting in touch with that heart energy, getting in touch with your true energy that's inside you, that core energy that Andy talked about, you know, feeling it running through you. You should be able to experience your energy and have high energy, good energy that drives you forward in a good and positive way. That you resonate and you know, other people can, you know, see it. You know, because when we when we care, we come back to our heart, you know, we'd find that so much of our lives we'd actually end up doing differently. You know, we'd end up saying no to so much stuff, I reckon. You know, what would you say no to today when now you've come into your heart energy today? Now you've come back to core today. What would you say no to today? Maybe you'd say no to uh, what, what Stingray is offering up there. <laughs> you know, we draw the right people around us because we're resonating in a way that's truly from our heart. You know, we have that resonant energy that uh, kind of Bill Monroe talks about. From the Monroe Institute, they talk about it being resonant energy. It makes life so much easier because it helps you to say yes to the right things and no to the right things. And you can put the guilt to one side because you know for well it wouldn't make you, it wouldn't make you feel good. We carry so much guilt because we we end up saying yes to so many things, and actually it doesn't benefit us on a health level. You know, the guilt that people carry around and, and you know, I just want to take it away because I can see that by taking it away, the health will just go up a notch, if not the several notches. What are you carrying? What guilt are you carrying around that's taking that energy away? Nick, can you not encourage um, Stingray to go bang his gongs, please? He doesn't need any more encouragement. He really doesn't. Oh, God. Honestly, what do I meant to say about that? But I, I thought I knew better. I thought you knew better, Nick, honestly. The next thing is you'd be telling me you've got to have a cigarette and a coffee oh, during, my, during my health session. <laughs> but this heart energy, this core energy, this getting back in touch helps you, you know, connect with the right people. It helps you wag your tail. I love that phrase. My tutor told me once, you know, you've got to do things that make you wag your tail. I think we should all have tails that wag. I think it'd be fantastic. You know, that way it's such a great indicator whether you're happy or not about something. My dog can't help herself. When, you know, when she, when she sees something or somebody that she really loves to bits, she can't help herself. She wags her tail. <laughs> I just, um, I'm worried now about what Stingray is going to put in the chat box, actually, about that. What is it? It's about wagging your tails. <laughs> what makes your tail wag? <laughs> there you go. <laughs> listening to ourselves. I just truly believe, you know, that whole space, creating space to listen and then coming from the heart about what we do with our bodies and to our bodies because it's about what we do to our bodies. With our food means that we have listened 
know that something isn't we know that something isn't feeding us you know that, that, that it doesn't make us function properly you know i know some food to feed, 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 feed the soul i know they do i know some ways of living feed the soul you know, it might not be, it might not be health on a plate. You know, look at the lady, the French lady who basically had a, a cigarette effectively um, every day of her life. You know, chocolate, the dark chocolate, and I think she even had brandy or like sherry every single day or pour. You know, it'd be, people like myself would go, "Oh, that's not good for you," but it is if it's feeding your soul. You know, the rest of her lifestyle was probably fairly, um, you know, probably made her fairly happy. In fact, she said she was a, a very happy person all the way through her life. And it is about feeding your soul on so many different levels, not just the physical level. The physical level of food is often quite easy to do when we change things over. And, you know, we put the supplements in and we put the diet in. But, but we have to do things that truly feed us, that make us come back to our heart energy, you know, and make us wag our tail, make us feel so good inside. You know, where we go, oh, yes. I just feel so lovely because of that. Because it's feeding your soul. That's what's truly important with health. It's all about feeding your soul. Being of service feeds your soul. It feeds the mind on so many levels, as does food. It can feed you on so many levels. It's far from just being physical. The physical aspect is just one aspect of what food can do for you. You know, in the rebuilding of your body, there's so many things that it can do on so many levels. Think about the rituals that people have around. People think about the guilt that often people give you over food. You know, oh, you know, I'm on a diet, you know, and basically, oh, you know, you say, oh, maybe I don't want that piece of cake. And then your friend says, oh, you know, just one piece of cake doesn't matter because they've got a different agenda. You know, it's feeding their soul in a different way. But they're taken away from you. It gives a different resonance. You know, say, oh, about how does it feed you in a different way? Maybe, you you know, you eat it because you want to make your friend happy. It makes you feel good. Those endorphins are good for you. Or does it make you feel guilty? Oh, well, I'll have it then just because, you know, you've almost forced me into this position of having it. Oh, that's, that's guilt. There's no you know, guilty food. Oh, guilty life. It doesn't feed the soul. You haven't listened to yourself truly. You haven't come from your heart energy. To be able to make that decision, because that's why I say, you know, you'd be able to say yes or no to something easily because you know it's not going to truly feed you on that level, on that soul, on that heart level. This is why when people say to me, you know, you've said you know, that I can continue eating chocolate, and I'm like, oh, well, yeah, I can even continue eating cake, yeah. Why would I want to take things away that actually are truly feeding you? But are you truly enjoying it? Does it make you wag your tail or do you feel guilty? So many people feel guilty when they're eating those foods. So they eat them really quickly, they eat them secretly. And, they, you know, they take themselves away from other places. You know, oh, nobody can see me do this. No one can see me buy this. That's not, that's not feeding you in a true sense. It's not coming from your heart. I say, you know, if you're going to have those foods, enjoy them. Come from your heart with them. I, you know, make love with them. Enjoy them on that level. Feed yourself on not just a physical level, but on a heart level with them. Because I'll tell you, when you do that and you truly connect with that, you won't want a huge amount of it. You'll only want smaller amounts because you'll want to feel good. It'll be the feel-good factor that you'd be looking for from it. And you'll know that it's feeding you in one way, but it's probably making you tired and more fatigued and maybe, you know, changing your weight and slowing you down on another. So you may choose to shift your focus from it in time just because it's not feeding you on that level, but because you slowed down to actually enjoy it and take your time over it and, and create an awareness around what it does for you, that awareness then really starts to speak to you in a different way. It starts to actually inform you of what you truly are looking for because mostly when, you, when, when people are eating those foods and often through comfort and they're eating them excessively, they're eating them in a way that's because they're trying to feed their heart energy. Because they're not truly in their heart. They're, true, they're unhappy. And those foods aren't making them wag their tail. Not all the time. Occasionally. But not all the time. So what's going on in the chat box? Dare I even look? Nick's saying he feels guilty enough. I don't want you to feel guilty. Oh, so much work to do. <laughs> He's had a bad tooth today. Oh, 
Why didn't you say I could have sent, I could have, I could have done some healing from a distance for you, Nick? Wouldn't that be lovely? And Rich is going to post a vid of the of the gong, and he posted some stuff on David Hickey, I think his name was, and that music was lovely. And I posted it in the Facebook page; it was absolutely lovely. And and Stingray saying he loves rituals, <laughs> even though he's now so CD. <laughs> I see you taking it seriously as always. There's loads of rituals around food, so you'll find that people, you know, you've got your ho- your holidays, all, all of your birthdays and things like this, loads of rituals around foods where people go and they do stuff around food and your dinner and, you, you know, how it's broken down through the day. And this is where people often find it really difficult to actually break out of cycles with foods and stop feeling guilty because they're often upsetting other people who have also attended that ritual by saying no. Because often, I know where I come from, you know, you go to, down to somebody's house and you basically are constantly given teas and coffees and you know something to drink and and then the food comes out it starts off as biscuits cakes and then you're fed you know a big dinner if you're still there and that's just the norm in the north of england where i come from and you didn't you didn't get out of the house without being very seen as being rude if you just weren't there was permanent there wasn't permanent tea and coffee going on <laughs> so 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 many rituals around foods you know your birthday parties and stuff and all your buffets and people saying oh you're not eating you know your christmas dinners and things let's see what else and people are people are giving you lots of advice around you around your toothache nick isn't that lovely <laughs> and, and Stingray saying I've changed my tune since last week Don't now he's going to go back in and get that Marmite out it's not good for you Marmite it really isn't good for you you can have a little bit it's about feeding the soul Not apparently you've bought catering size ones though for the rest of your life since the apocalypse didn't happen on the 21st as you were expecting and your new survival stuff hasn't happened <laughs> and Ben's saying he loves cake dead easy to chew enjoy your cake just enjoy it but I'm, I'm i'm saying you have to feed yourself feed your heart you know food is so much more than just having diet and health on a plate it really is and you know i truly believe that you have to feed yourself on so many levels not just the physical so what else is going on well apparently jim and lorraine are offering neat whiskey to someone i'm not sure are you trying to put nick out of action I need him to host for at least another 15 minutes. <laughs> and someone else is saying, whiskey, the cure-all. And um, I, my mother used to send us off with a hot toddy every day, I have to say, to school. Um, I think one day the school actually sent us home because we'd had a bit too much of that hot toddy in the morning. It was in winter. So uh, I'm not sure exactly what they think about that nowadays at the school. But I don't think they were that impressed at the time, <laughs> in all honesty. <laughs> <laughs> so let's see but no put the marmite away it's really bad for you but you know our bodies with those foods that aren't good for us the, the, our bodies eventually will tell us that physically it's not feeling happy because of it so even though it may it may feed us on one level actually they're not feeding us permanently on another level you know, it will tell you when it's had enough and it, that it will want you to get back on track because it wants to feel good, your body. It wants to truly feel good from a cellular level and it cannot make those connections if you are constantly feeding it junk food because junk food gives you junk thinking, it gives you junk feeling. You know, in fact, you stop truly feeling and connecting within your body because it just can't because of those foods. They dull the, the, the body and the senses down. It's about how you feel, about how you connect with it, you know, so that you have the energy and the vitality and enjoy, you know, it's about enjoying it. Most people, you know, I was speaking to someone this week and they said, oh, the regime. I was like, regime? I started calling my practice boot camp walker. (laughs) You know, Captain Walker, I had a laugh about it, but I don't see it as a regime. I see it as a way of connecting. My food connects me. My food gives me energy. My food gives me vitality. I know because I come come at it from a heart place. I know what's good for me. I know what speaks to me. I know what's going to give me um, energy on a cellular level so that I can truly answer yes or no. I can truly connect with people. I can truly resonate in a way that I want to. You are what you absorb in every cell. 
you know, your body needs to feel good to be able to do that effectively. It really does. You know, the less at ease it feels, the more stressed it feels, the less it will absorb and rebuild your body. And slowly it deteriorates. So coming to heart, you know, your, your body will truly select the things that actually are good for it. It will know what is truly going to feed it in the far more, you know, oh, you know, a way that truly lets you connect. Because otherwise, you know, if you're going to eat all that Marmite, your body slowly deteriorates. You cannot keep putting junk in permanently because it doesn't allow you to come from a high energy. It doesn't make you feel good. It doesn't wag your tail in that way. It doesn't. That food, if you sit and think about it, doesn't make you feel positive about yourself permanently. It helps to break down the body. It helps it to deteriorate on a long-term basis. You've got to listen to your heart. You know, medicine is such a stick and plaster approach. Junk food is such a stick and plaster approach. Mostly we're eating these foods on the go. We're not stopping to think, taking time over our food, truly feeding ourselves, sitting and sit, eating our food and allowing it to digest as we should do. Instead, most of us are eating on the run, eating whilst we do other things like on the computer and stuff. So we're not even connecting with the food. We've made it as fast as we can in the microwave. And then we're sat, sitting here eating it as fast as we can so that we can carry on doing anything else. And yet food is so important to the body. True food, where you've truly connected with it, you know, our food should be uh, like our bodies in regards to high water content. And that water content can contain a message. And if you come from your heart, it should contain the heart message. Because then it feeds you on that level in every cell of your body. How beautiful is that? It's the emoto work. If you imagine that if you imbued your food, because it can hold it, that message. If you can, if you if you put it in there with love, if you made it with love, and it's high water, wow, that goes into every cell of the body. The emoto work. He shows where he's basically um, photographed the you know beautiful messages in water where they've been frozen into crystals and the positive messages look beautiful and the negative messages just look really fractured. And that's junk food for you. That's negative thinking. That's, that's not making yourself truly happy. That's what it does to your body. It fractures the cells in regards to the molecular structure of water within them because we're predominantly water. So if we have got love and we're coming from a love energy and a heart energy and we're truly getting in touch with ourselves and listening to ourselves and and connecting, our bodies experience that beauty in every cell from that food, from that thinking, from that water. It can't help but do that. It will give you longevity. All these medications and the the damaged water that we drink and the junk food, it suppresses us on so many levels. And this suppression, it just suppresses further and further and further, deeper and deeper and deeper into the body. It makes it harder and harder for it to deal with. Harder and harder means more stagnation. It means we start to clog up and slow down. How hard do you want to make this for yourselves? You know? It's easy to start with your foods, to change things, to get back in touch with it. You know, what you're eating, when you're eating it, how you're eating it. You know, why you're eating it. The reasons are really key. You know, often we eat emotionally. Actually, you know, some of that, when you get those insights about why, it can be really useful. You know, how your food's changing your behavior. In what way? What's the, te- what's the time scale between, you know, you're eating something and then you're having a reaction to it? If you've got more energy, if you've got less energy, if you're having allergic reactions, are you getting headaches? How do you feel that evening? How do you sleep that day? How, are, how have you, how was your concentration been like? What's your memory been like for the rest of the day after that food? If we sp- take time out to think about it, create that awareness, create space around the food that we eat, create a consciousness, 
You'll see what, whether that food is feeding you or whether it's taking away from you having a truly beautiful life and beautiful body and, you know, a truly look, being truly in your heart and having that true connectedness and having the energy and vitality that we should be experiencing. What's really frightening is often those foods are changing your behaviors and we don't even realize it. Now, we know about, you know, if someone eats lots of sweets. I remember I used to watch someone in the office that I used to work at, and he used to eat packets of Skittles. And within a matter, we used to take them off him, <laughs> because within a matter of an hour, he was a complete nightmare to work with. He was completely wired from it. And we could all see it, and mostly we see these things, but we, we don't get in touch with the dashboard of our body. We just ignore it. We just constantly ignore it. This is where we just, you know, we allow the pain, we allow those behaviors to change. And we, we and it's because we just carry on working, working, working with our busy, busy, busy lives. And we just carry on roughshod through what is actually big, big indicators that we're often seeing in our body. So it can be really quite useful to take time to listen and watch what you eat and become really aware what you're eating and when you're eating and how you're eating it. You know, start looking at the patterns behind it and the patterns of maybe fatigue and headaches and energy losses. Is it food? Is it the environment? Are there things that are taking these things away, your, your energy away, your health away? Start to look and be more observant about it all. You know, look at what makes you feel good and then start putting more of what makes you feel good. What's working your tails? Because <laughs> when we come at it from a heart place, we suddenly we say yes to more of the things that are making us wag our tail and gives us that whole good feeling through our whole body and makes us truly connected and makes us energized and makes us feel vital and gives us bright eyes and a bushy tail. Ha, we want to do more of it. We don't want to do less of it. And Nick's saying, spread love, not Marmite. You're absolutely right. I love it. That's going to be run. <laughs> I'm liking that. <laughs> Cracking. <laughs> and Kaza says, spread evidence, not fluffy fakery. Is that aimed at me? Do you want some evidence behind all this? Well, I'll tell you, if you want evidence about it, get yourself a diary and start writing it down on paper, what you're eating, and then make yourself more aware of it. <laughs> make yourself aware of what it does to your body how you feel after it how your emotions change how your behaviors change because the more natural your food the more balanced you will generally feel overall and more connected you will feel the more energized you will feel the more e it will become easier to make good decisions for yourself you know you generally feel happier in yourselves when you eat more natural foods and not the marmites of this world so you need to offload that catering <sighs> amount of uh, Marmite that you've purchased, Stingray. Um, and he says, I don't think it's so much the Marmite, but it could be the combination of spreading it on my lard sandwiches. <laughs> oh. <laughs> You're probably, probably right. <laughs> At some stage, it'll just go quiet. We'll just see. We'll, we'll see you emoticon or whatever it is, the avatar in in the box. But we'll never hear from you again, and we'll all know that actually you've probably done. <laughs> you've probably killed over due to your appalling diet, Stingray. Honestly, and you tune in every week, and I'm astonished it hasn't changed yet. <laughs> anyway, don't do the stick and plaster approach. Come on, you know, listen, listen to your bodies. Take time to care for yourselves. It's time to get in touch with your heart. You know, come from a loving place with everything you're doing. Be really loving towards yourselves. You know, particularly not the food. You know, particularly the food. Love, love what you do. Love what you eat. And then you'll feel it. So. Okay. So we've got Shazis next. He's in the house. Is he in the house? Probably. And I'm too chilled today. So we've got Rohide. There you go. Thanks for joining me, guys. I'll speak to you all next week.